everybody, welcome back to my channel. I have a fun tutorial for you today, a new backpack that is out. It's been out for a few weeks from Kaya Papaya Designs. I love, love, love their designs so much. This one is called the Allura Backpack or Allura Bag. I don't know if she phrases it backpack, but it's a backpack. Uh, I mean, it's got a lot of cute features on it. Absolutely love it. My vinyl kind of wrinkled a little bit. I'm gonna try and get that out, but it looks adorable. I really like it. Um, one thing I learned making this bag is I interfaced it too heavy. I did Decaville light on the side, deck two layers. I did a front and a back Decaville heavy lining and exterior on this back. I wouldn't do that again. It made it super hard to bind and sew this curve right here, super hard. Um, I would lighten up my interfacing quite a bit, especially if you're doing an all vinyl bag, you don't need that much. So learn from me and your bag will turn out fabulous. <laughs> um, features on this bag, let's see. Uh, it has this adorable front pleated pocket. Let me open this up and this has a magnetic snap and it's got this pleated pocket right here. Inside, it's got these um, elastic water bottle slots. On the side, it has mesh pockets in there. And then on the flap, it's got another mesh pocket. I really like all the little pockets on this bag. They are adorable. Um, it is using binding method on these side panels to finish up this bag. Some people hate it, some people love it. That's fine, not everybody has to love it. Um, it does make a good bag though. I used webbing for my straps. You can use vinyl, up to you what you wanna do. I used all matte rainbow hardware. I'm pretty sure all of it's on my website. Even this pretty little trim is on my website. Um, purse feet, everything. And I used my new Celestia rainbow thread. Look how cool that looks. Love it. All the vinyl I think is from this one. I'm going to have to look up. I don't remember where this one is from. I will find it. This one's Kaya Papaya, not Kaya Papaya. This one's Indo Love Creation. My inside canvas, my paint splatter, colorful rainbow canvas is from Fabric Therapy. It is just the best ever. It's in her vault right now. So keep an eye out for it for when she will release it again because it is amazing canvas. Um, difficulty level, I would say intermediate level. I would say intermediate just because of these sides. They were a little tricky. Um, so have some, have some practice under your belt maybe. Take it slow, you can do it. That's it, all right, let's start making this adorable bag. Okay, let's go over our pieces for the Allura backpack. I am doing it as written. I am interfacing as it suggest, suggested since I have never made this pattern before. So I'm not sure if I would change anything yet. I'll let you know after the video. Okay, so my first pieces are my side panel pieces. You should have two exterior, two lining, and they are mirrored. So they are shaped opposite of each other. So you need mirrored pieces for lining and exterior. For my exterior and lining, I am using vinyl and um, a water resistant canvas. So I put some Decaville light on the side panels on my lining side. Um, because I don't want my side panels to be saggy at all. So hopefully that is a good thing. So I did do that out of my seam allowance by about a half an inch because I don't want it to be in my seams. Okay, this is my back panel of the bag. I did do Decaville Heavy. You should suggest Peltex. Either one works great. I went ahead and fused that on there. She has in the instructions you're supposed to do on the lining and the exterior, which is what I did. So here's my lining and it's fused as well. So this is gonna be nice and sturdy and not slouchy. I like that. 
All right, for my flap, I have my two pieces here. This is my flap um, on the front of the bag, my exterior, my lining. I put Decaville Light. She has fleece in the pattern. Um, I like the way the Decaville Light feels on flaps, so I went ahead and did that. Again, it's out of my seam allowances. All right, those two pieces there. My base, I have my exterior, and I did already put my purse feet on. They're just screw-on purse feet. I did two layers of Decaville Heavy. She suggests two layers of Peltex. Again, I'm just using Heavy instead of Peltex, so I did do the two layers fused on there um, with my purse feet. And then my lining. My front panel of the bag, I've got my exterior and my lining. My big pleated pocket. My, actually it's probably this way my exterior and my lining. I have my mesh pieces for the pockets on the inside. I am doing the mesh. Um, I need to grab binding. I'm gonna use pre-made bias tape, just black um, for all of this. So I will, I just buy it off of Amazon. So I will grab that. And then I have my grab handle piece here and my strap anchor piece. And then this is my zipper pocket lining. And then these are my zipper, um, I forget what the official name is it, of it is. It's for my zipper on the flap. You should have two exterior and two lining. Those are all of the pattern pieces, all of my hardware. I have four zippers, I have rivets, I have my connector pieces. For my hardware, I have a couple of zipper tabs. Um, my nameplate, I am using a flat trim. I sell these on my website now, uh, four bags like this. So I'm going to put that on there. I have two D rings, two slides and a magnetic snap. I am using instead of vinyl for my straps, I'm just using webbing, just one inch wide webbing. So, um, the pattern is for one and a fourth. So I am just doing one inch because that's what I have. So you can adjust it um, there as you want. And then I am using a cool little overlay I got from Joe Lee Lee Creations with my logo on it. Pretty cute on the inside pocket. And I think that's it. Those are all of our pieces. Let's start sewing this bag. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is put on my magnetic snap to my flap and my pleated pocket here. The markings are on the pattern piece, so you just need to transfer those markings onto your material. This is my lining piece of my flap. All right, so I'm just putting this on, marking out the prongs. And it says the male, which is the one that has the part that sticks up a little bit. I am using um, 14 millimeter snaps. She has 18 millimeter in the pattern. It doesn't really matter which size you use, I don't think. I prefer these smaller ones um, for my bag, so that's what I'm using. Put that on there. All right. And then make sure, now I didn't put anything behind it because I have this Decaville light already fused onto my flap, so, but I am gonna put a piece of tape over it just to protect those prongs from doing any damage to my vinyl piece. All right, so there is my first snap on that. I'm gonna set that aside. Get my pleated pocket out here. There's my marking for that, and I will do the same thing. I will put a piece of Decaville Heavy behind this one because it isn't fused with any interfacing, so I wanna protect it. I'm just gonna cut this um, stabilizer down a little bit. I don't need it that big. All right. And then I will cover this as well. Now I've already put on my purse feet to my bottom piece, so I don't need to do that. Okay, so there are my two snaps. Next step.
Okay, we're gonna do a little zipper prep for the front two zippers on the flap. These are my two zippers. I've already prepped this one. So you wanna fold down your um, end at that 90 degree angle and baste it. And then at the other end, it's super hard to see in the camera, I think, but I drew a line across so I know where the zipper comes together. And this has an R on it. And same with this, this one has a L on it for left. So I know which zippers are my right and my left zipper when I put them on. Um, I will show you how I did that turn on this zipper. So you wanna take it up and I have it marked three fourths of an inch down. I'm going to pull it apart and pinch it on that line and fold it under. So it has that turn at the end of the zipper. And then I just stick a pin right there and do the same on this side, just trying to get it as even as possible on both sides of the zipper. And then I'm gonna put a pin right there. And then I'm just going to baste that down with my machine and trim it even. Okay, so I have those basted it down. I'm just going to trim so they're even with the edge of the zipper and then I will melt the edges and then I will be taking the pulls completely off of my zipper for the next step. All right, so I wanna take, so now I know that this is my left and this is my right. Make sure you mark them so you know which is which. I'm taking my pulls off like that. I'm grabbing my flap. So I know which one is which. This is my left side. So this is my left side. And I want this piece. All right. Left side on the left side, lining the edges up. Go all the way to the top here with it. And we are going to baste that on this side. And then we will baste the right one on the right side. She jumps around a bit in this pattern, but she says it's for a reason. So that is why I am gonna follow how the pattern is written. So you're going from lining to exterior quite a bit. We don't just do all, all the exterior and then all the lining. So just to let you know. All right, so I'm gonna baste this side on first. And now I'm going to grab my right side here and do the same thing. Okay, so I have my first part of my zipper basted on. Next step. Okay, we're working on our zipper for our inside mesh pocket. I already did one um, end of my zipper tab. So I'm gonna show you this other end. I've marked three fourths of an inch down. Again, hard to see, black tape, sorry about that. <laughs> um, and here is my zipper tab. It is one long piece like this. I'm gonna fold it right sides together here, okay? And then I'm just going to slip it in between my zipper, right sides down, along that three fourths inch line that I drew there, okay? I'm going to clip that in place and I am going to stitch along the edge of this zipper tab with a 1 4 inch seam allowance. 
Actually, I'm gonna do an eighth. I did an eighth on this side. I guess I'll have to do the same on this. That'll be okay. I'm gonna trim my tape down here. fold this tab over so it's right sides together and you can trim that down okay and top stitch So there is my zipper. You want to make sure it's eight inches. Mine's too long. I need to trim it down just a touch because I didn't do as big of a seam allowance on that zipper. Is that good? That's good. Okay. So next I want to take this. You can use fold over elastic. I just have bias tape. And this will be the top here. So I'm just going to fold it over and I'm gonna sew that onto my zipper. All right, I'm gonna get my mesh pocket piece. I think I'm gonna do this just a tiny bit different than what she does. I'm gonna put my, my binding on here. And I'm going to add binding to the bottom of this mesh pocket as well. I can't see in the instructions where she has that. I don't know if I'm just missing it, but I want my bottom to be finished as well. So I'm gonna put this on both the top and bottom. Again, you can use fold over elastic. I'm just using this because it's what I had on hand. All right. After you have that done, you're gonna put this down on the other side of your zipper here. Right here. Mine's a little bit shorter. Why is mine shorter? That's okay. We'll do it right there. All right, you could, you know what? Let's do this. Let's put some double-sided tape down and get that in the right place before I sew it. I'm doing this a little bit differently than she has in the pattern. So, sorry about that. Just, okay. So now I'm going to sew that on. All right. 
right, so that's what I have. I'm gonna get my flap out next and we will sew this through the flap. So I am doing mine just a tiny bit different than she has in the pattern. In the pattern, she just used the mesh raw edges. She didn't put the elastic or binding on it like I did. Um, so mine's just a tiny bit different. I'm used to doing my mesh pockets this way, so that's what I did. Um, either, either way will work just fine, I'm pretty sure. So she has markings in the pattern for placement on where you're supposed to place it up from the bottom of the flap. And I am going to sew it along this bottom part first. Okay, I'm just going to top stitch that down. And then I'm going to baste it up along the sides and then top stitch it along this top part so it encloses your whole pocket. Just make sure it's laying nice and flat and looks even. Just going to kind of clip mine into place here. All right. And now I'm gonna baste it along the top, or baste it, top stitch it along the top here. All right, so that's the way I did my mesh pocket. Again, you could do it either way. I think they both work just fine. Mine just has the finished mesh edges and they're not folded over. Okay, so there is my zipper pocket for my flap. Next up. Now we're going to put our two flap pieces together. So we have our flap piece that we sewed the zipper on and the one that we just did the zipper pocket on. We're going to put those right sides together and clip those all together. And we are gonna sew around with our seam allowance given in the pattern, the three edges leaving the top open for turning. This might be a little tricky flap turning, but I think we can do it. I think it's big enough. It'll be just fine with that Decaville in there. You know, the other option is if you wanted a more um, stiff flap like I did, you could not add any stabilizer until after you do this part before you sew the top up and you could slide it into your flap. And um, she has you using fleece in the pattern, which you could do and you wouldn't have to worry about that. I'm just doing a little bit firmer stuff here. Okay, so I'm gonna use this side as my guide and we will sew this up. Okay. 
You wanna take some pinking shears or do some notches along this curve. Just don't trim where your zipper is here. You don't wanna trim that zipper tape, but you do wanna trim some of the bulk down here on these curves. I love pinking shears for that. Again, you could just do notches. All right, let's turn this flat real quick. You could always get a hair dryer and heat this up too a little bit and that would help. That's ah, gonna turn fine though, look at that. No problem. Press these little corners out here. So they look nice. All right. Cool. There's my flap. All right. And I think next we're going to top stitch down and around our flap. Love that rainbow thread, that looks so cool. All right. All right, so we're gonna work more on the zippers for the flap. I did close the top of the flap up, so it's all, all done. I'm gonna set that aside for a minute. I have my two zipper side panels here. These are the exterior, these are my lining. I have my zippers placed on left and right, making sure that they're in the right direction. And now we're just going to do what we did on the flap. I'm gonna line it up with the top of the zipper panel here side. And we are going to baste this zipper on first. And then we will lay the lining part of this zipper panel on top of it and sew it at the full seam allowance. All right, so we're gonna do this part first, basting this. And now I want to get my lining piece right side down and we're going to sandwich that in between and then sew it at our full seam allowance.
All right, after you have that, you wanna fold that right sides together and then we're gonna to top stitch along the zipper side. All right, right sides together. Now I'm gonna to top stitch. So there's my first piece. I'm gonna do the same thing with this left side here. Here we go. Okay, so now we wanna attach these um, to our flap with the zipper here. This may take some practice, you know, attaching zippers. Just be patient. Ugh, got to figure out the right angle here. There we go. I'm going to do it this way. I like to look up top, try and get them as even as possible here. And that's why you drew the line on the back at the beginning. If it lines up, then you have it on correctly. And it should all line up pretty nicely like that. If not, you can readjust. It may take a couple of tries. Looks good. All right, there's my flap. I am going to just baste all of my edges closed. I'm gonna baste along the top here and close off this zipper, and then we will continue. my front flap piece. All right, you wanna lay your flap down, zip it up a little bit, un or unzip it, and flip this up out of the way, because we're not sewing on this. We are just sewing down here. You wanna take your front body piece, which is this for me, right side down, Make sure I'm doing this right, right side down. And you are lining it up with these bottom edges down here. I'm gonna clip that and we will just be basting. Oh, clips, I tell you, they hate me. Basting this into place. All right, we're gonna baste right down here. So I'm just gonna flip it over so I can kind of see what I'm doing here and baste that. That's all you're doing for this piece. Okay, that's what it should look like. We can set that aside. Well, in the picture, she has it flipped up like that. So either way, okay, I'm gonna set that aside and move on. I'm gonna work on my zipper pocket for the inside lining piece. So I've got my front body lining piece. I have my center marked. I have my placement marked. It's just super hard to see on here. And I have my overlay. This one's just a custom one that I got from Joe Lily Creations. She 
puts your logo right on it, which I think is super cool. Um, I am going to, I will link it below where to get these if you need one. Center that up along the line that you can't see, but I can. <laughs> And I've got double-sided tape along the back of this, so it's sticking, okay? Stick that down with your double-sided tape. Now I'm going to just sew around the outside edge of this zipper overlay first. Now, if you don't want any back stitching um, to show, you can just go straight around and tie it through the back, which I think is what I'm going to do for this one around the outside edge, just so it looks nice and clean. All right, here we go. My tension okay? Yep. I'm gonna stop right here and just pop this through real quick. So I don't have to worry about it when I get there. Okay. Now I'm just going to sew right up next to my beginning stitch and stop. I will not be back stitching. One more. Okay, and then I will pull that out. And I will pop those two through. There we go. So all of my threads are along the back here and I have no back stitch. So it just looks really clean. Ooh, look at that, that's so pretty. Really clean and nice. So I'm just gonna tie these threads up and melt them real quick and then we will go to the next step. All right. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna cut this inside fabric out that's in between your zipper here. And you wanna cut it just so it doesn't show on the right side. So I like to turn mine over so I can kind of see where I'm cutting on this back side here. And just cut away that material. All right, that's the back. And now look at the front, look how awesome that looks. Oh, I love it. All right, so you wanna take your pocket here and your last zipper. I'm going to sew it right side up. No, yeah. and your pull closing to the right. My zipper's a little bit bigger than my um, pocket, that's okay. Okay, so you're gonna stitch along the top of this zipper first. So they're both laying right side up.
There's a couple of ways to insert zippers into overlays. I'm just showing you the um, way she has in her pattern. All right, so fold the lining zipper pocket away from the zipper and press. I'm just finger pressing, so it looks like this. I'm gonna turn it over and I'm top stitching along the pocket piece here. So it's just stitching it all flat and nice. So that is what we have, front, back, or back, front, however you want to do it. All right, so I'm going to take this now. I'm laying this flat, zipper side up, and I'm inserting my zipper right here. Now you can put some double-sided tape along the bottom there, which I think I will do, just so it stays in place. I'm gonna go ahead and put it along the top for when I need it. Right there. Beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna take off this bottom one first here. And I'm gonna place it in my zipper. So your pull should be closing to the left now. I'm just trying to make sure I got it on there nicely and even and where I want it. That looks good right there. Okay, so I'm only going to be stitching along this bottom section first. Move this just a tiny bit. All right. I'm only going to be stitching along this bottom. And again, if you don't want to show the back stitch, we do the same thing and we pull it through. So I'm just gonna go straight. I'm not gonna back stitch. Same for when I get here, I'm just gonna pull it up and pull it out. Okay, pull that through. I'm gonna tie that, burn the ends, and then we'll move on to the top part. Okay, so I have those all tied. Next, you're going to take the bottom of the zipper pocket you're gonna line it up to this top here. I'm just gonna put a couple of clips so it doesn't move on me. And we are just going to close up the sides first, okay? So we're gonna sew these sides shut. Make sure that you're folding your uh, lining body piece out of the way and you're just stitching up the pocket part of this, okay? So we're just closing the sides of our pocket real quick. Okay, now I'm gonna do this other side here. Okay, so now it's time to stitch the rest of it shut. So I'm gonna flip it back over. I am going to undo my, I put some double-sided tape under here. It will help it keep it all in place when I sew it up. So now you're gonna sew the rest of the way around this overlay and completely 
close up the zipper. So I'm just making sure this is lined up where I want it. I don't like that right there. Just a minute. I did a weird um there we go. All right. Beautiful. So now we're going to start right here. We're going to come down and go all the way over and then back down this other edge, meeting up our seams from the stitching before. I'm not going to backstitch again. I'm going to pull it through and tie it and it will look seamless like it was done all at once with no backstitching. All right, here we go. that is how you do it. So I just need to pull through these threads, tie them and melt them a little bit, but my pocket is done. I'll trim off these um, extra zipper tape here and melt it. And then we'll go to the next step. All right, so next we are going to take our lining bottom piece with that pocket we just finished. We're gonna put those right sides together here. And we are going to sew along the bottom of that. Make sure you pay attention to the seam allowances in the pattern because it changes throughout your pattern. All right. There we go. And make sure you're not sewing your pocket too. Um, mine's short enough it doesn't get in the way, so I'm good. And then you are going to flatten that seam. So when you flatten a seam, it's going to be flattened like this. And I'm going to sew along each side of that seam, keeping it flat. Top stitch. And again, I'm just folding my pocket out of the way just to make sure I don't catch it. There we go. back down along the other side. All right, so that is what we have right now. Okay, we're gonna take our flap piece that we finished we're going to clip our flap out of the way. And then we are going to take our pocket piece that we just finished and we're sewing the top part of this pocket piece. So you're gonna put that at the bottom. See, I already stitched and did it wrong. So <laughs> I'm telling you the right way. We're gonna put the top part of the lining piece to the bottom part of this flap piece. Okay, and clip that on and then we are going to sew that. Make sure you pay attention to the seam allowances because they do change throughout the different steps. All right, hopefully I can do this right this time. All right, 
And then it says, fold down both the lining and the exterior body front. Which I think is this. And now we are going to stitch along here. That makes more sense. All right, I'm just, I'm gonna fold this, press my seam out so it looks good. I've got holes there from my previous step, so hopefully I can just go along those same holes. Here we go. Now we're going to top stitch. So that's what we have. There's our flap. That is much better. All right, next up. Okay, so I have my front slip pocket piece, my pleated pocket. Actually, not slip pocket, my pleated pocket. So I'm going to put them right sides together. I've done some markings on my lining here. I've marked my 3 8 inch seam allowance along the top so I can have that as a good guide. And then I've also marked where I'm going to be folding this pocket for the pleats. So we're gonna sew along the top first, along that, along those markings, and then we will clip all of our seams. I'm gonna use my pinking shears, and then we will turn them right sides out and top stitch along the top. All right, here we go. 
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch that now. So there's what I have so far. Next step. Okay, so it's hard to see, but I did transfer those fold um, lines onto this piece so I can kind of tell where I'm going here. You're going to start with the one that's closest into the center on each side. So this one, not this one. And you're going to fold it. So this is my lining side up. I'm going to fold it like this along that line and I want to top stitch this. and then lining side up again. Now I'm going to fold this back on the other pleat line right here that I have marked out and I am going to top stitch that now. Okay so that's what my front looks like. Okay I'm going to go ahead and stitch this one now too. And that is how you create that pleated look. All right. So that's one side. Now we're going to do this side. So first, the one that's closest in. Right here, we want to fold it along that line. And just fold it a couple times to make sure I've got it at the right spot. Okay. Fold it back over on that second line. Where is it? There it is. Okay, now I'm going to top stitch that one. I'm going to go this way. There is what your pleated pocket should look like when you are all done. Looks pretty. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and add my nameplate right down here. I don't know if she, I'm just gonna do it a couple inches up and then we'll go to the next step. So we are going to attach our pleated pocket to our body front. So take your flap body front, you're gonna flip for this first part, flip your lining piece up and out of the way, okay? Now mine, I don't know if my snap placement was um, a little bit off. I think it might've been. I think I might've been going off of an earlier pattern that I received. Um, anyways, mine's a little bit higher than it should be, but it'll be okay because when it's all folded down, it'll look fine. Um, so, okay, so you want to get that pleated pocket on your front piece. You may, depending on how you folded it and all that kind of good stuff, you may have to trim your pleated pocket down a little bit. I think I am going to have to because of the placement of my snap, which will be fine. It'll be okay. Just make sure it looks even and the same along both sides here. All right. See, when I flip mine over, mine's uneven down here. That's okay, I will trim that up. Again, I think it's the placement of my snap was just a little off. Okay, so you are going to start one and a half inches down and we're going to baste along here um, with your lining up. Just trying to find my small ruler, there it is. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick to start. So I wanna start one and a half inches down, so about right here. And we're just basting. I'm gonna to have to base the second part like this so I can see the bottom here. Basting this other side here. Again, stopping one and a half inches from the top here. All right, now, once those are all basted, you're going to flip, ah, you're going to flip your lining piece back down. This is your lining piece here. And now you're going to stitch this top part up here and baste that down. And then you can flip it back out of your way. Ooh, it's looking good. Look at that. It's looking pretty. I like it. All right. You want to take this piece again? We're not quite done. So you want to flip that lining back up out of the way. You're going to take your bottom piece and you're going to line it along the bottom and we're going to sew that on. Just a minute. Right there. 
That looks good. And then we're going to top stitch that. We're going to press the seam going to the bottom and we are going to top stitch. This is where your layers are kind of thick because you're sewing through these layers of the pleated pocket down here. So it gets a little thick. This is where I don't think a domestic could handle this part at all. Well, and these pleats were pretty thick too. This, if you're doing all vinyl. If you're doing a cotton bag, it's a different story. Gosh, I love this rainbow thread so much. <laughs> Look how pretty that is. Okay, now next step. We're gonna work on the strap anchor handles and D-rings now. So here is my strap anchor. I have my middle line marked, hard to see on this black, and I have my double-sided tape. We're just going to fold our raw edges into the center. And then we're gonna top stitch along each side of that. Um, I'm going to top stitch though along the other side. So I just wanna see how far in I wanna go. I'm about a half inch in on each side. Okay, here we go. And that caught it, you see that? Okay, and now along the other edge, the other side. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside. That's my strap anchor. Now I wanna get my handle out. Same thing, line down the center, double-sided tape. Maybe, come on. Okay. All right, so I am going to be just sewing down one and a half inches along each side of this handle first. So I'm just marking down one and a half inches. Now, if you don't want the whole back stitch look, you're going to be pulling your threads through, okay? So here we go. You can back stitch along these edges, just no back stitch right here. and then you pull it, pop it through, and then we'll tie it, okay? Just like that and like that. Okay, so do that along all four sides. And then we'll go to the next step.
Next, we're gonna fold that handle in half. And we are going to start right where that stitching ends right there and come down. And this gives your handle that flat part here that attaches to your bag and then the folded part here, okay? Now, if you're really picky again about the stitching, you can not back stitch and pull through. All right, here we go. So I'm starting right where that stitching ends. As close as I can get it. So I will pop that through and uh, actually I'll pull them through to the center and tie those off and then we'll go to the next step. All right, so I have my D-ring connectors, got my centers marked, put some tape there. We're going to take that off and I am doing one inch hardware instead of one and a fourth. So it's up to you how big you want to do everything for your hardware. I just didn't have any one and one fourth, so we are doing one inch. All right, and then I want to sew down each side of these connectors. I think my bobbin's almost out, just a minute. Okay, fresh bobbin, here we go. Okay, so once you have those sewn on, you wanna put your D-rings on and sew those shut. Okay, so now I have these little triangle pieces here. Um, I need to mark our center somehow here on these pieces. Front or back, maybe the back of them. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to stick those onto our D-rings a little ways down. Try and get them centered about right there. Same with this one. Where's my center? Yeah, about right there. Just make sure you're doing them evenly here. Okay, we're going to stitch along here, along that triangle, connecting it to the D-ring. All right, and then it says to trim down this D-ring overhang by, so it's about an eighth of an inch, just about right there. All right, repeat for the other one here. All right, that's the back of it, that's the front. Pretty sure they're gonna be sewn on like that to the back, it's gonna look really cool. Okay, let's move on. All right, so next we are going to attach our straps and handle and everything to our back piece. Make sure you have it laying the correct way width and height wise. I have marked my center, I marked my strap placement here and handle placement. And this one is my strap anchor placement. So I am just using webbing for my bag. So I am going to stick that along this center line here. And I do actually like to do mine at a slight angle. So we're gonna do mine at an angle. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna attach that first. place my handle. I just put some double-sided tape along the bottom. Just like that, I'm gonna sew that down. All right, so now I've got my strap anchor here. We are gonna wanna fold all of this out of the way eventually. All right, so I did put a piece of double-sided tape along the back of mine just so it stays in place and I'm lining it out up that, at that marking up here. Okay, so now I wanna sew along the edge of the strap anchor, top and bottom. Now, if you wanted to, you could do rivets here, 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 and here to kind of secure everything into place along here. Um, well, you could do it right in the middle of this line here. But I feel like if you did it up here, you'd catch more of it um, than doing it in the middle. So anyways, um, I don't, should I? I don't think I'm going to, because I did a good stitching there and there. I think I'm okay without the rivet, so I'm not gonna do that part. Um, let's go to the next step. Okay, so now we are attaching our D-rings to the bottom here. It wants you to do some markings along the bottom. You're gonna go two and an eighth up here. Maybe this vinyl is not easy to have markings on. <laughs> um, and then you're gonna go two and an eighth this way. And then you're gonna connect those two points. Right there. Okay, and that is our placement for this connector. So this connector that we did earlier, we're gonna line that along this bottom um, line that we just drew right there and we are going to sew this on. Try and get it centered right there. Okay, once you have that sewn on, you're gonna flip it down. Just the triangle piece, just like this. And then we're gonna baste that and top stitch along the top. I'm gonna do the top stitch first. Again, right here, it gets kind of thick for that vinyl. You're stitching through quite a few layers. 
All right, and now I'm just going to baste that to my other backing piece. You could do another, she has you doing another row of stitching here. I think I will real quick. All right, and now I'm just gonna baste that on. I think that is such a cool way to do a connector. How cute is that? I absolutely love that. That's really cool. Um, you could do a rivet if you wanted to as well. I don't think I'm going to. All right. Repeat for the other side, same steps. done. Now we're going to take our front flap body piece that we did with our back piece that we just did. We're going to flip this over right sides together. Make sure your lining is flipped out of your way. You're going to take this along the bottom edge, bottom piece here, and we are lining these two edges up right sides together. And we are going to clip and sew these two pieces. Okay. That's what I'm doing. All right. Here we uh, go. So now we want to top stitch again. You want your seam allowance going towards the bottom piece this way. And we are going to top stitch along the bottom here. Okay, that is a big piece. That is a big piece. Okay, next thing we're going to do, we wanna take this piece here, one with our pocket, it's front, that's the back. We're gonna fold the exterior back with this right here with this piece, okay? And we are going to line those two up. And we are only going to baste those together. Kind of a funky looking thing we have right now. Okay. Make sure all your straps and everything are out of your way. Okay. Okay, we're gonna baste this all together along this edge. All right, this is our exterior 
kind of all sewn in a circle here. We're gonna put this aside now. We are going to work on our other lining panel. Um, I missed, or I didn't pay attention uh, to this part. There's elastic on this section, so I'm going to put the elastic in. I think that's a cool addition to hold bottles and stuff. So this is just a one inch cut of elastic. I've got my marks five and 10 inches on it. I, it's hard to tell on my panel, but I do have it marked where I want it along here um, from the pattern. And then I have a four and an eight inch mark here. So I am just going to lay it on my end first and stitch that onto my piece. And then I'm going to stitch the other side on real quick. Well, no, maybe I'll just go down. I'll just go down. All right, so I've got my next marking is that four inch. I'm gonna line it up with that five inch mark here and sew along there. You could do two rows of stitching on it, one row. I did up and back down. Maybe I'll do one more right beside it just to give it that extra security. If you are gonna be taking water bottles and such in and out quite a bit, will be a lot of um, pressure put on that part. Okay, so then I'm gonna take the next marking. Mm, sorry about that, move you a little closer. Next marking and line that 10 inch up with that eight inch mark right there and that'll give me another loop. Okay, and I'm gonna sew along that. And then I'll do another one right by it. And then all I have is to put this one on the end here. Line it up with your edge. Super easy, I'm glad I did the elastic. All right. Make sure you know on this piece, which one's your top, like where your top and where your bottom is. I'm gonna put a T for my top up here, just so I can know for myself. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is take that big old exterior piece here and we are going to add everything to it. So I wanna get my zipper pocket piece here and kind of lay it by itself so it doesn't have anything attached to it. And along this bottom edge, I wanna take my right side down on the bottom piece. So this is the bottom just like this, and I'm gonna sew those two together. All right, so that is what I'm sewing. Here we go. Again, pay attention to your seam allowance because it changes. And then you're gonna wanna open that seam and top stitch down each side of that seam. So I'm gonna open this seam along the bottom here and I am going to top stitch down each side.
The last thing we're going to do, it says it's helpful if you pull this flap apart here. You wanna pull this to the top here. And then you have two full ex completed lining and exterior. And then we will turn that right side out and put it all together. So I'm gonna sew this along the top now here at that bigger seam allowance. Last time we just basted that and this time we're doing the full seam allowance. All right. Okay, that's what we're looking at. Here we go. Okay, so we are going to turn this all out and together. So it's helpful if your flap is open. Let's see. But really, we just wanna turn it through, right? Let's see. All right, woo, that was a workout. Okay, so both of your layers should lay together now. That is what we are looking at. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, this vinyl kinda, I think I can get the wrinkles out when I um, use some heat. I remember that now with this vinyl. That's okay. All right, so next step. Okay, so the next step is you want to clip all of your layers together, um, your lining and your exterior along these sides that they're not connected. This top part is, but this bottom part isn't. So we are just going to baste these layers together. So I just clip them together and I'm gonna baste along my edges just to make this one full piece. Okay, we have one full lining and exterior all put together. Super cute. All right, so next we are going to work on our side panel pieces. Okay, so I have my um, mesh for my side pocket pieces. I just did binding on the top. I didn't have any fold over elastic. Um, so my pockets just won't be like, um, you know, the tops won't be stretchy like that, I think they'll still be fine. So you just wanna line it up. I'm gonna line up my top two pieces here first, because you do wanna have, you know, a bit of room to get in and out of that pocket. Just make sure they're even. Well, she has them just laying flat from there like that. So we'll try that. All right, and then we just wanna baste this mesh on. All right, here we go.
and then trim your pocket off, even with the edges. And then once you have one of your mesh pockets on, you wanna take the other piece that goes with it. You're gonna lay them wrong sides together and we are going to baste these two pieces together. All right, so you should be seeing your right sides of fabric. All right, I'm gonna baste those together. That's one panel done. Okay, go ahead and do the exact same thing to the other side. All right, we are going to be adding our panels to this bag. Um, make sure you're doing the right panel on each side. The straighter side of your panel should go to the back of your bag. I've got my center clipped here on the bottom on both pieces and I try to center my top piece. I will most likely be using staples for these curves because I feel like they're ones that are gonna wanna shift. So we are just gonna start clipping this all into place. My exterior is inside out again. Here we go. And you can put some snips into these curves if you want. It will help your side go on there a little bit easier. Again, I'll probably be putting some staples in there too.
Okay, so stapling is a little bit more time consuming just because you do have to remove all of these staples before you can put the binding or anything else on. So just, you know, be aware that you're gonna have to do that. All right, let's sew this up. Uh huh. Okay, this corner was kind of rough, but I think I did it. And when you go around a second time with your elastic or your binding, it should be even better. But this is kind of a hard, hard um, turn on a corner. So just take your time, you can do it. I'm gonna go through, I have to take out all my staples and then we will cover my seam up with my binding or you can use fold over elastic. Okay, I've got all the staples taken out and now I'm just going to wrap my binding around. I'm gonna start along this side here. I'm just gonna take it and clip again. You can use fold over elastic. You could use a one inch strip of canvas. It's up to you. I'm just going to use this so it all matches. And the nice thing is you won't really be able to see this when your bag is all done on the sides. It's not terribly visible when you open the bag. So it does not need to be perfect either. 
I have yet to see a perfectly binded bag. So don't freak out and stress yourself out about it. Okay, we're gonna sew that on as best we can. Okay, I think I got it. It's not pretty. <clears throat> but it does the job. All right. <laughs> that is one side. Um, I think it's gonna be okay. It looks all right on the ins on the other side, for the most part. 
All right, so I am going to attempt the same thing. I think the only thing I'm going to change um, differently that I did was I'm going to first baste it at a 1 8 inch seam allowance when I baste this on. And then I'm gonna go around and do the full seam allowance. That might be a little bit easier around these curves for me to get it all in there. And then we'll put the binding on. Okay, I am gonna go through and just staple my corners real quick again, and then we'll sew it. Again, I think I just interfaced it too heavy. I think that's my problem, but that was a little bit easier when I ran, went around and basted it first and then did my full length stitch. That worked a little bit better. I'm gonna take out my staples and then I'll put on my binding. Okay, I'm just taking a look at it. It looks like I caught it all except here. So I just need to go over it real quick right there. We are going to turn this right side out and see if I did okay along those curves. All right, here we go. turned out okay way too heavily interfaced but oh my goodness I think it turned out pretty stinking cute um the vinyl creases on this other vinyl down here that'll come out I just need to heat it up a little bit and it'll smooth out. Okay. I mean, it's not the best, but I think it turned out okay. Again, I'm going to put some heat on that and see if I can get the wrinkles to come out. I like it. I like it. If anything, I think I would have put more, um, I would have put Decaville heavy in this flap and Decaville light everywhere else. No heavy in the back, no heavy on the lining, just one layer on the bottom. I think that would have been plenty. All right, I just need to put my little trim on and finish my straps. All right, let's see if I can remember how to do this. Pretty sure you go up and down first and stick it on there. And then you come through that D-ring 
And then we're gonna go up here and back down the other side. Just like that. And that's what I will be sewing together. Okay, I'm gonna do the other one just like that. All right, I'm not gonna show you me sewing these together. I'm just gonna sew a little box around this just to secure it. And then we'll add the trim to the flap. All right, last thing I'm gonna do is add my little flap trim. So it should just fit on there pretty nicely, just like that. Um, you can put some glue in there, which I think I'll do. Because why not? Let's just put a little bit in there. Come on. My glue's kind of messy. Okay. And then you just slide it on and put the screws on. I think I'm going to do this center one first. You could always um, poke a hole with your stiletto or an owl. And just screw that right on there. So cute. All right, I'm just going to put them all on. And that is my flap trim. Yay! Kind of gives your flap a little weight too to go down. Look how pretty that is with the flap trim on there. All right. And we are done. Okay, that is it. That is our Allura backpack. All done. It is adorable. My vinyl's a little bit wrinkly. I forgot that this vinyl does that. I'll get some heat on it with a hair dryer and it should come out. That is it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. Don't do what I did and interface it too much. It will make these sides harder. <laughs> you live, you learn, you do better.
Um, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. And let me know if you guys have any questions, comments down below. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.